Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I'm going to show you how to add an outlet to an existing circuit. We are going to be putting an outlet from above the countertop underneath the countertop so that we can have power underneath the countertop for any special appliances you might be installing. We're going to be installing this reverse osmosis system and it requires its own outlet. So I'm going to show you how you can add one yourself. So this is where we're going to be installing the reverse osmosis system underneath the countertop there. And we have a current power source right here above. I'm going to be finding out where the stud runs on either side. And then we're going to pull this out, run a new power source down below. And then inside here, it should line up somewhere on the right hand side. I know that there's going to be a stud running one side or the other. We're going to cut through the back of this cabinet, install a new box, new outlet, and it will be all ran off of this original outlet up here. All we need is some of these basic tools. This is an old work power box. This is what we're going to be putting in underneath the countertop. New outlet, new cover, some wire. We have a couple little uh, wire ties if we need them, a fishing tool, wire stripper, some basic tools. I'll put links for any of these special items there in the description below. But let's go ahead and jump into it, pull that outlet off the wall and find out which side the stud is on. So I've turned the power off and I've determined that there is a stud that runs right along here. I was able to do that by running my stud finder above it and I could see that there's actually wood when I peek behind here. And with the power off, I was able to just also visually confirm by just peeking inside there with a the light just to make sure that I have the stud here, which means I have a cavity of space here. So I want to mount the new outlet in line with this, but somewhere inside this cavity and how I'm going to figure that out to transfer it below is by using this laser level. I can set the laser level up to line up there and then I can transfer that down below the countertop. And then I'm going to take my old work box and put that on there in line with the green market and start cutting through. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my oscillating or multi-tool with one of these straight cut bits and I'm going to cut right on the inside of these white lines so that I don't overcut. There's only so much room on the outside of these old work boxes. So I want to make sure that I go small first and I know that I can mark right on the inside of the white. So we're going to punch through this. Be very careful not to go through. I do have some water lines over here to the left, so I shouldn't have to worry about those. Anytime I'm cutting through something that I can't see behind, I just want to be careful. So I know we got about half an inch, three quarter inch of this material. We have some drywall behind it. And I believe if I remember correctly, when this house was built, there's also some OSB board behind that. So we're really thick here. So I'm going to be cutting through a couple different layers. So now the hard part's done. We got everything cut out, remove the drywall, the cabinet, and that piece of OSB board. You can see the old work box fits in there now. So you can see directly behind, we have our cavity. And then straight up from here, we're gonna now pull these out a little bit more and create some room. And then we're gonna push a wire down through. And we have a couple different ways that we can do that to make sure that we fish that wire through. One way of doing that is by using a fishing line these are specifically used to pull electrical cables through the wall. It has a hard plastic wire. You can feed it up through, or you can feed it down through the top of the box in the back there, and then catch it in the back, tie your wires to it, and pull your wires through. I think I should be able to take my yellow 12 gauge wire and actually push it through the back of the box and find it there and grab it. If not, I can use my fishing line. So now that we have everything kind of cleaned up down there, just cleaned it up so it wouldn't be so dusty. You can see as I pull these out of the back, I've removed one of these plastic tabs where the other wires kind of come through. Um, you don't necessarily have to remove it, but I'm doing that just so I have a better access to actually push that wire down. I'm going to use my fishing tape first just to kind of show you how it works. And if I did everything right, I should be able to push that fishing tape straight down 
and we should be able to find it right here inside that cavity and then we can just confirm that we have a clear pathway then we're going to use this yellow romex we're going to be able to push it down through tie that into the back of the outlet and then also wire in our new outlet in the bottom so let's go ahead and put the fishing tape through and see if we did it right so that sounds like it bottomed out we'll go ahead and check down here oh i think i can see it right there This right here is our metal cable. So now I know that I can just push my Romex through. I'll pull this back out because I'm just going to start with the yellow wire. But that's exactly what the fishing tape is for, is to be able to push it through cavities. And if you have to, you can navigate through places, through insulation. But because this is a short run, we can just go ahead and use the wire. Don't even have to mess with this. There we go. Got that wire through. Then we have the wire through the bottom, wire through the top. We're gonna wire this up and then I'll show you how to install the old work box and wire in our new outlet and we're done. One thing you do wanna pay attention to when working around wet areas is you might have a GFCI outlet. The top two wires are the line coming in from the breaker box. They bring the power in. Everything else from the wires on the bottom out are carried and protected by the GFCI outlet. So something to pay attention to if you're going to branch anything off of this type of outlet, branch it off of the two bottom terminals. These two bottom ones, not these two top ones. These are the power coming in. This is the power down the line that will be protected by the GFCI. Whenever you're working with a regular outlet, it doesn't necessarily matter. You can bridge or come off of either terminal. And if you're gonna do multiple lines, I would recommend doing a pigtail, which is where you basically branch all the blacks together and all the whites together. Then you bring off one black and one white to each terminal because you do not want to double up under either of these terminals. So this outlet by itself can accept two blacks and two whites, but that's it. If you're going to have three coming off of it, you need to do a pigtail. And like I said, bunch them together and then bring one off. That way the power can be shared, but you're not putting too many wires underneath one terminal. I'm going to pigtail some wires and then branch them off of this bottom one. That way we can share the power to this new yellow wire here that's gonna go down. So I'm gonna just do that really quick. Then we'll have this yellow wire connected to the line that's protected. Then we can put this all back in the wall and just work under the sink. So I cleaned it up a little bit here for you to get it started. I just wanna show you exactly what I'm talking about. We have the wires coming in that supply power. They're protected by the GFCI outlet. And then on the bottom terminals, this is where the power goes down the line to other outlets or whatever else we might have in the house. But because I'm running outlets along the chain that are already here and I'm adding one down, I need to do a pigtail. So I've ran one short white one off the white side, one short black one off the black side. This black one is going to go to my original one that goes to the other outlets in the house. This goes to the new wire that goes below the countertop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bunch these three blacks together under one cap. And I'm going to bunch the three whites under one cap. And what that does is it shares the power to the two lines, but the only thing coming into the terminal is this single. So basically branches off single and then goes out to two or three. This is the cleaner way and proper way to do the wiring. It's called a pigtail. It's because you're pigtailing all the wires together and then you have one or two or three coming off, but it cleans up the connection to the terminals. You don't want a whole bunch of connections underneath these screws. You only want one. So one out, splits to three under a cap. We join the three whites together and we join the three blacks together. And this helps us be able to also clean it up and tuck it back in. We also have the ground wire here. And I took the ground off of the new one and I bunched it in under here with the rest of these grounds. So the ground is also shared. So those are all pigtailed underneath here. You can see we only have single wires, all these connections, things are pigtailed. And then we tuck those back in the box and then we only have single wires that come out to these connections. It's a lot cleaner and safer way to do it. And then here's exactly what I'm talking about. The black wire twisted with the other three. And then this one here twisted with these three. I shortened them a little bit. Then we can take the proper cap that accepts three wires. 
cover these. Now we have power shared off of this bottom terminal, goes to the original outlets, and it goes down now to the one that we just ran below the sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck these back here nicely and then screw this back in and we're done working with this. Then we can work below the sink and we'll be all done. So now we have the outlet and switch all wired back up. We're gonna take our old work box, go ahead and pop out one of these openings in the back. Because what we're gonna do now is take this wire that we have feed it through the back. Then we can put this outlet box through the hole and screw these down. The way that these old work boxes hold themselves in is they have these little tabs right here that when you go to tighten it, it actually pulls that tab forward and it squeezes against the backing. And so that's why they call them old work boxes because this is gonna be something done on an old construction job already. New work boxes are for new work, new houses. Old work stuff has usually features that can put into retrofit an outlet or retrofit items in the house. So if you ever see those terms, old work, new work, that's what it means. So then once you go ahead and tighten down these tabs, this box is not going to come out of there. So we can go ahead and cut this down, strip it, and then we can go start wiring in our outlet. We'll go ahead and put our bends, a little quarter turn bend here. black on the hot line I'm going to our white on the neutral we can do our copper on the green the ground So now we have everything wired up. We have our white on the white side, black on the hot, neutral to the ground. We can tuck this back in, put this into our outlet, put our cover on, and then we're done. Another suggestion I'd make whenever you're gonna be putting these little outlet covers on and you're doing work and sometimes your cuts are a little bit off, is I pay the extra like 10 cents for these outlet covers that are 3 8 larger and it helps cover up any mistakes or cuts like these type of cut lines now we're all done everything's here we're going to go turn the power back on and check both of these with our little circuit tester make sure all the work's done right we're finished all right so we got the power turned back on see we're reading 120 122 we can go down here Looks like we're good. We're getting a full reading. And that's a wrap. That's how easy it is to be able to run that power from another power source directly down. There are some other ways in case you need to jump over some studs. That usually requires a little bit of drywall work. But in this case, there's usually an outlet nearby. And if you don't mind keeping it somewhere in line vertically, you can find that space there to work with and you can get yourself back on the road. So there we go. We got everything installed. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm really good at replying back to everybody's comments on there. I appreciate all the feedback that I get. So I love helping you guys work through stuff. If you're interested in the osmosis system, I'll be putting that video here at the end. It is from Shell Water Systems. It is super nice. But once again, if you haven't already, please hit like, consider subscribing. I really appreciate you all watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next build.